Hello everyone, this is Dr. Gerek. We are starting this new chapter. This is Human Capital Education Chapter, Chapter 6. And let's get started. In this first part, we'll talk about some stylized facts and we'll talk about some definitions of education. We'll learn about formal and informal uh, types of education. Let's get started. So here is a nice quote. Uh, if you think education is expensive, try ignorance. So something to think about. And one more thing I would like to tell you. If there is one thing you want to get away from this chapter, take away from this chapter, is that education, it does pay, number one. So it, it does have financial returns, but it also has non-financial returns to the person who acquires it. So I just love it when people are like, well, Steve Jobs didn't go to college. Um, he didn't finish college, to be more precise. Steve Jobs dropped out of college, dropped out of college. Mark Zuckerberg dropped out of college. Why do I have to go? Those people, I want you to understand, those people are outliers, what we would like to call outliers. Uh, yes, they didn't finish college. Yes, they dropped out and they are wildly successful, but that doesn't really rep replicate to everyone. So let's get started. So in the previous chapter, we learned that wages are different. This is the compensating differentials chapter because jobs are different, right? Jobs had different attributes. It had some negative uh, attributes to certain jobs. It could be noise, risk, so on and so forth. Workers are also different. In the previous chapter, we kind of alluded to that. Workers are also different in terms of their risk awareness right not awareness but evasiveness because everybody knows the level of risk but they have different levels of risk tolerance okay so workers bring into the labor market different levels of human capital as well not only their tolerance of risk so human capital how do we define human capital it's a unique set of abilities and acquired skills. It not only includes um, education, it also includes other soft skills. So the main questions we ask, how does human capital affect wages and salaries? And is time and money spent on human capital good investment, right? Is it a good investment? Are we wasting our time? And the other question is, where do we get human capital? So we know the formal source of human capital, schooling education right but we also have informal source of human capital this is work job experience and on the job training on the job training can be firm specific or general training we'll learn all about these things in this chapter so i would like to first talk about some stylized facts about education these are statistical facts in 1940s 75.5% hasn't graduated high school. This is the American U.S. population. And only 4.6% had college degree. How tiny is that? So in 2012, for instance, uh, more than 10 years ago, 13% hasn't graduated high school. Look at this. So there has been a huge change, right? In like 70 years, only 13% hasn't graduated high school. 28% had college degree and more. So it could be finishing college and also some master's degree. But minimum requirement is college degree. Today, this number is more than 30%, which is coming up. 2019, this number hasn't changed much because it hasn't been too many years since 2019. Only 9.9% .9 hasn't graduated high school. So 75.5, 13 and 9.9% .9 has not graduated high school. And people who have had who had college degree was 4.6% in 40s, 28% in 2012. Now it's 36%. Okay, so definitely we are getting more and more education. So research shows that education is strongly correlated with labor force participation rate. We will talk about this. Unemployment rate, so positively correlated with labor force participation rate. That means the higher education you get, the more likely you are going to participate in the market. And higher education is negatively related with the unemployment rates. 
and they are positively related with earnings. Okay, so this is the education distribution of U.S. population. Percentage of population 25 older by educational attainment. So if you look at this is less than high school blue has been going down. High school or some college this is associate degree. This has been going up. And bachelor's degree or higher definitely has been going up from 4.6 to 36%. Okay. So this is the very recent table, employment status of civilian population uh, by educational attainment. So this is the labor force participation rates. This is divided by levels of education. So you have less than high school diploma. High school graduates, no college, some college or associate degree, bachelor's degree or higher. We are looking at the participation rates, labor force participation rate, which is the percentage of population that's either employed or unemployed participating in the market. So these are the recent numbers, December 2020, last one. So it, it's all the way from December 21 to December 22. So if you look at this, let's say, let's take a look at December 21, right? 45% for less than high school, they are participating in the labor force. 55.7% of those with high school graduate, high school degrees, no college participate, higher. So people who have some college and associate degree, 62.7% participate. And finally, people with college degree or more. 72.4 percent so as you can see it's going up 45 55.7 the college graduates participate more this has not changed as time passed again the relative ranking stays the same okay so again labor force participation rate of college graduates or more above 72 percent if you look at those with less than high school diploma, 45, 46%, much lower. And then comes high school graduates, little higher. Some college, little higher, but the highest. So people with higher education, people with high more years of education actually participate in the labor force more frequently, percentage-wise. Okay, so we are going to actually start with the monetary and non-pecuniary benefits of education in part two. I will see you in part two.